Okay, hi all. Um, having, having already looked at timber uh, conversion, which is turning it from a tree into planks, and having already looked at timber seasoning, which is turning it from planks into dried wood that we can use, we now have to look at the defects that can occur because of those two processes, getting it from a tree to the plank. If, if either process is done incorrectly, we can get um, either naturally occurring defects or artificially occurring defects in the wood. Some add value, some devalue. We're just going to look at these here now uh, for a while. So a defect is taken to be an irregularity uh, occurring in or the timber, in or the timber, which may lower its strength, durability, value, or diminish its appearance. Defects may be natural, which occur whilst the tree is growing, or artificial as a result of poor conversion and seasoning or handling after felling. Okay. So defects in timber can occur naturally during the growth of a tree or artificially as a result of incorrect stacking or seizing, seasoning. Some defects can be decorative and very pleasing to the eye, so these will be kept like knots. Uh, others may cause problems during the manufacture of a project. Such defects must be overcome. Uh, natural defects occur during the growth of a tree, like a knot, a resin pocket, shakes and wany edge, which we're going to talk about in a moment. So knots. Knots form where branches of a tree are cut off or stop growing. Loose knots are called dead knots. You'd often see those in pallets on, on cheaper um, pieces of timber. Loose knots are, are, are dead knots. Um, is where a branch has stopped growing before the tree is felled. Other knots are called live knots. Okay, so the, the, the branch is on the tree when the tree is cut down. Um, all knots reduce strength of timber. Knots are difficult to work with. You'll know that from woodwork class. If you hit a knot with a saw or a chisel, it's a very, very hard piece of wood. Um, knots reduce the strength of timber. This is very important when we get into roofing timbers. Okay, the less knots, I suppose, the more value uh, is placed on that piece of timber. Resin pockets, most common in conifers which are uh, the likes of Sakita spruce or your Christmas trees, the ones that produce cones, forms in internal cracks in the wood, cracks caused by high winds or extremes in temperatures. So you have a very, very warm summer and a very, very cold winter, and that could cause resin pockets. Uh, it reduces the strength of the wood, and it is basically the sap that is, that is coming out of the, of the tree. Um, shakes, so two main uh, types of shakes, you've got radial shakes, which radial radiuses, they're like radiuses, they come out from the center of the tree, or tangential shakes, which I suppose uh, tangential, they go uh, kind of cup-like or circular with the annual rings on the tree. Shakes are split, are splits in the, in the ingrain of wood, occur either in ray lines are with the annual rings, so radial or tangential. So caused by tension forces which build up in, while the tree is growing. When it is felled or during seasoning, weaker points break and wood split, splits causing shakes. Radial shakes. As you can see here in this drawing, they, radia, they, they radiate out from the center of the tree. Okay, you've got heart shakes which come from the heart, star shakes, which look like a heart, or sorry, a star, and frost shakes, which go all the way to the outside. Wood splits inwards, uh, the, the result of a very harsh uh, weather condition. Um, occur, the tangential shakes occur in the direction of the annual rings. Winter wood separates from the summer wood. So you've got a cup shake, looks like a cup, and a ring shape that looks like a ring. Uh, Wayne Edge, and I've just put in this picture here of the, I suppose, uh, an epoxy river. 
Epoxy is a type of uh, a liquid that when you pour it and mix it with a dye, it, it hardens really, really hard. And some people use it in decorative woodworking to, with a, the use of a piece of timber with way any edge left on it, which is, I suppose, almost like the, the edge of the plank when the bark is removed. It gives a nice kind of irregular kind of a pattern and, and that can be quite valuable when it's um, used with epoxy. Now epoxy resin is quite expensive. It's fairly toxic stuff to deal with as well. There's a really bad smell off it. Um, yeah. Artificial defects. So these are, a result, are the result, I suppose, of incorrect stacking. So not enough blocks underneath the plank. You load the next plank on top of the next plank on top of the next plank, and there's a bow occurring in the planks that are stacked. And you, that, that means that basically the, the board is really hard to work with. Causes cupping, bowing, twisting, warping, in splitting, I suppose, will be when you don't paint the ends of the piece of timber. Okay, and the weather or the, the drying process dries out the end of the timber a little bit too quickly and you can actually lose a nice bit off the end of your plank because there might be a crack or a split at the end of it. Case hardening, when you're pushing a piece of timber through a table saw and it, it, it wants to close in on itself, that's called case hardening, so it makes it difficult to work with. Um, a honeycomb check, again, that's like your, your um, resin pocket. So cupping, this can occur, again, I suppose, where you have an area of heartwood in the middle and sapwood on the, the outside. It dries at two different rates in whatever seasoning process was taking place and the board can recup as a result. Okay, so sapwood and heartwood and different drying rates. <coughs> you, ideally, when you, when, when you cut down the tree, you should try and split the heartwood from the sapwood and that makes the seasoning process easier, which makes the inboard uh, more stable. Bowing, again, incorrect stacking. Twisting, again, occurs when opposite corners move in a similar direction and the plank loses its flatness as a result. Again, that can be as a result of incorrect, poor incorrect stacking, not level ground. In splitting cause, if the ends of the boards dry out too quickly, if they're not painted, if there isn't a rag thrown over the ends so that it doesn't dry out quicker, too quickly. Um, yeah. Case hardening, like that. Honeycomb checks occurs on the inside of the timber. Rapid drying causes the wood to shrink and internal fibers to split. This greatly reduces the strength of properties of the wood.